I, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, PhD, for the Maoist Third Worldist Collective. I would encourage you all to read the article uh, by Amy Goodman in Democracy Now. I will link the article directly below this video. It is a really, really tragic story. And I will summarize it for you as best I can, but please read the article. Um, I don't think that I can really do justice to it. I'll read part of it. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, there is a man, um, a teacher in Israel, who was arrested by Israeli authorities for speaking out in favor of Palestine. He was held in solitary confinement. He was not allowed to bring anything with him. Eventually, he was released. What will happen to him now? I don't know. Apparently, most of the Israeli media has been speaking out against this teacher who stood up for Palestinian rights. For a long time, Israel has been moving in the direction of becoming an ethno-authoritarian or fascist country that process is now complete not only with Bibi Netanyahu's war on Gaza masked as a war on Hamas intended apparently to lead to the complete um, abandonment of Gaza by the Palestinians so that that Israel can simply take over all of the land. That is a, the apparent objective of the events that we are now seeing play out uh, in Israel and in, in Gaza. Let me go ahead and, and read to you uh, what this, just a portion of this thing, not the entire, not the entire article. This is the preface to it. On November 9th, Israeli police arrested Jerusalem history and civics teacher Mayir Baruchin after he posted a message on Facebook about his opposition to the killing of innocent Palestinian civilians. Police seized his phone and two laptops before interrogating him on suspicion of committing an act of treason and intending to disrupt public order. After being in jail for four days, Baruchin was freed, but lost his job as a teacher and is still facing charges. These days, and this is a quote from Baruchin, Israeli citizens who are showing the slightest sentiment for the people of Gaza, opposing the killing of innocent civilians, are being publicly persecuted. They go through public shaming. They lose their jobs. They are being put in jail. He adds... If I had been a Palestinian, I would have faced even more violence. This is a complete and absolute tragedy. I will now add my own commentary to it, as insufficient as it may be. Anybody of good character 
anyone with a strong moral compass who sees the inhumanities that the Palestinians are experiencing at the hands of Benjamin Netanyahu and the Israeli Defense Forces. Anyone like that who can, and that probably is not everyone, I don't know how many people would be included in this category, but anyone who can, anyone who has the resources, the money, whatever, should leave, should leave Israel. Israel is no longer a safe place for people to live who are not Zionists or are not strong Zionists. This guy, for all I know, might be a Zionist, Mayor Baruchin. Maybe he's a Zionist. Maybe he supports the existence of Israel and is simply opposed to what the IDF is doing. That is not clear. But that does not seem to matter either. Simply the fact that he opposed the killing of innocent Palestinians was sufficient to have him arrested interrogated, held in prison, in solitary confinement. Let me read one other portion of this article. This is again from Mayer Baruchin. First of all, thanks for having me, he says to Amy Goodman. When I got to the first interrogation, the interrogators presented 14 posts, most of them before October 17th. They were posts from four years ago, from two years ago. Only one or two posts were after October 7th. What I'm trying to do in my Facebook posts is this. For most Israelis, Palestinians are really vague images. They have no names, no faces, no family, no hope, no plans. And I'm trying to give them names and faces introduce them to Israelis so more Israelis would be able to see Palestinians as human beings. So that's what I do in my Facebook. The police didn't like it, so they arrested me. On November 9th, I got a call from the police to come over for interrogation or sedition. I called my lawyer, and he said that in order to interrogate an Israeli citizen for sedition, they need an approval from the attorney general. The police did ask for approval, but they were rejected. So they decided to interrogate me for intention to commit an act of treason and disrupt the public order. But that does not seem like much of a difference to me, but I'm not a lawyer. The minute I walked into the police station, they shackled my hands and my legs, and they showed me a warrant to search my house. Five detectives took me to my house and ransacked the place. Then I was taken back to the police station for the first interrogation that lasted four hours. After that, I was taken to the jailhouse. Like you said, I was characterized as a high-risk detainee, 
a teacher? A teacher? A high-risk detainee? As a retired professor, I, I find that unimaginable. Separated from everyone. I wasn't I wasn't allowed to bring anything with me, a book or something. I spent there four days in order not to go crazy. I exercised every hour and a half. Two hours. On Sunday evening, November 12th, they took me for a second interrogation, and their technique was it it really wasn't asking questions. It was more of rhetoric. When you install the answer inside the question, you don't really let the other person choose his own answer. For example, they said something like, as someone who justifies and legitimizes the rapes by Hamas people, on October 7th, don't you think that, dot, dot, dot. That was their technique. Also, in my second interrogation, at a certain moment, they said that my Facebook posts are just like protocols of the elders of Zion, an infamous counterfeit text that was transformed into an anti-Semitic work and used by Hitler's Third Reich. Now, I'm a history teacher, so I asked them, have you ever read the Protocols of the Elders of Zion? There was no comment. I was taken back to the jailhouse, and on November 13th, I was released by the judge and still kept in the jailhouse for another three and a half hours. What he says is that his fellow teachers are fully behind him, unlike apparently most of the Israeli press. But what power do his fellow teachers genuinely have? The person who wields all the power in Israel is Bibi Netanyahu. Bibi Netanyahu has become an autocrat. Israel has become a dictatorship run by Bibi Netanyahu. What King Bibi says goes. That is the beginning and that is the end. Bibi wants this war on Gaza. He wants this war on Lebanon. And who knows what comes next? Whatever Bibi wants, Bibi gets. And thus is the situation with Mayer Baruchin. There's more to the story. I've only read a small portion of it. I would strongly encourage you to read the whole thing. As I said, I will place the entire um, article at the conclusion of this uh, video below it. Please read it. Please read it for yourselves. And please, please comment on it. If you are not already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to it. And I don't say that for myself. I don't care. I don't make any money off of this channel. I don't monetize my videos. I say it so that my videos get more views. That's all I care about. I don't care about my channel in terms of a money-making endeavor. I don't need the money. I'm a retired professor, and I have a lot of money. I don't need money. I will never monetize my videos because I don't need to. I don't need to. But please, I beg of you, watch the video. Like the video. 
subscribe to this channel and comment on the video in the comment section directly below. This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. for the Maoist Third Worldist Collective. Have a good day. And an even better day tomorrow.